In this video, we're going to learn how to place floors in our architectural project. To begin with, come underneath the Architecture tab, and then find the Floor tool, then select on Floor. When you do this, we'll see a variety of different floors that we can select off of the Type Selector list underneath Properties. Now to be honest, none of these floors really match the kind of floor that we want to do in this project. In other words, this is the first floor of our building, and I want to have a floor that's going to be actually on grade. In this case though, since we don't have one that matches up just perfectly, and I don't want to create a new one from scratch just yet, move over and select the generic 12-inch floor off of the list. It can always be replaced or adjusted after the fact. Once you've selected on the floor generic 12-inch, make sure that the level here just says Level 1. Check your drawing tools. And what we're going to do is we're going to draw all the way around the perimeter of this with the floor. Now, structurally speaking, this probably isn't the best thing that we could do. But just to demonstrate how floors work, this should work really well. Move up here and select on the Rectangle tool. And you notice that you can't really pick on the intersection of these two spots very well. So just click at the intersection of one of these. We'll adjust it after the fact and then pick on the intersection of another one of these mullions. Hit escape a couple times on the keyboard, pick on this line here, and then just drag it down until it lines up with this line here. It'll even kind of snap into place. Do the same thing with the line going up across the top. Click on it, drag it up. Then when it's even with that line going across the top, click the let go. If you zoom back out, you should see this purple or magenta line going all the way around the outside of the building. Then, if you click the big green check mark, we'll now have a floor in that location. To verify this, come up to your 3D icon and click on the little house. And you should now see a floor going all the way around the perimeter of your first floor. As I mentioned, after the fact, we could always adjust it. And when I say that, I mean that you could select on the floor and then pick a different floor off of the type selector list if you wanted to, such as generic 12 inch filled. And now it's replaced with that type of floor as opposed to the other type of floor that it was. Now let's draw in another floor up here on the second floor. We'll need to go to our level two floor plan by just double clicking there on level two. We can see what's going on right here with some of these taller walls, as well as some of these walls that are grayed out. The grayed out walls are the ones that are short. They're actually below our second floor. These ones that are darker, they're coming up through the second floor and going up to some of the floors up above. Now we could always modify our floor so that it will have holes for each of these walls, or we can adjust the walls themselves so they'll just go up to the underneath side of the floor. We have a variety of different things that we could do. But in this case, move up here to the Architecture tab again, select on the Floor tool, Use the Line tool this time. And let's start to draw, beginning with this intersection right here. Zoom out, zoom back in, and then click right there at the end of this curtain wall. The next thing I like to do is click this Pick Walls tool, and then check this checkbox that says Extend in the Wall Core. When we do that, and then move our mouse over, we'll see a little dashed line will show up toward the middle of this wall. And this is the core, or the structural part of the wall. So what we're getting ready to say is this floor is going to go through the structural part of this wall. In fact, it's going to have the walls up above it sit on top of the floor, while the floor itself will sit on the wall down below. So it's going to partially support the walls up above, as well as be supported by the walls down below. And that's because Extend in the Wall Core is checked. If Extend in the Wall Core was not checked, you'll notice that you don't get that dashed line, except for up here at the top, as well as the bottom. It's there, it's just very hard to see. So check Extend in the Wall Core, move your mouse until you see that dashed line, and then click in order to place it. We'll make this connection here in just a second. Once again, pick the Line tool. We're going to start there. And now we're basically just going to play Connect the Dots, zooming in and zooming out by using the wheel on the mouse to draw our walls all the way around the perimeter. Bring it back to the start. Then zoom in here 
and hit escape a couple times on the keyboard. Let's just bring this over so they're almost touching each other. The next thing I'd like to do is kind of eliminate the thickness of these lines so that I know exactly where they need to go. So I'm going to select on the View tab and then turn Thin Lines on. Now click on the line and then drag it over until it gets to that line right there. Now we can see that they're right over the top of each other. And when you do that, you can use the line command to draw from there to there and hit escape a couple of times on the keyboard. Do that same process over here at the other end. Line, connect them. Now that all the lines are connected and if you could follow it around with your finger, you'd go all the way from the start to the end. Click the big green check mark to finish that floor. It'll ask an important question. Would you like the walls that go up to this floor's level to attach to its bottom? So things like this curtain wall, would you like it to just go to the bottom of the wall? In this case, we're going to say yes to that. It's given us a warning message, but I'm not too worried about it. It's basically saying that it's going to have to delete some of the mullions if it does this. For our purposes right now, that's fine. So click on Delete Elements. Then it'll give us another big warning message telling us that on the highlighted walls, it's going to cut some of the material out of that wall. And is that going to be okay? And in this case, it's exactly what we wanted to do. So say yes to that. By doing that, we now have a floor up on our second level. Also, if we go to this section view and double click really fast on the circle, if you zoom in, you'll see the floor is sitting on the structural part of the wall. And then the next part of the wall is sitting on top of the floor. When it asked, do you want to cut that extra material out of the wall? It was talking about cutting that extra material out there between where the floor is now located at. I'm going to click on the X to get out of this view. Now, an easy zooming trick is if you double click on the wheel on your mouse. That'll do an automatic zoom extent. So I just double clicked on the wheel. And if you come now to the 3D view icon and select on it, You'll be able to see that there's a floor here as well as a floor here. So to draw your floors in, move up to the Architecture tab, ideally be in a floor plan view, though you don't necessarily have to be. Find the floor command, and then choose the appropriate tools off of the list in order to be able to draw that shape of the floor in wherever you need it to be. Then when it's all said and done, click the big green check mark in order to finish your floor.